The polar bear is a hypercarnivorous bear whose native range lies largely within the Arctic Circle, encompassing the Arctic Ocean, its surrounding seas and surrounding land masses. It is the largest extant bear species, as well as the largest extant land carnivore. A boar, adult male, weighs around 350 to 700 kg, 770 minus 1540 pounds, while a sow, adult female, is about half that size. Although it is the sister species of the brown bear, it has evolved to occupy a narrower ecological niche, with many body characteristics adapted for cold temperatures, for moving across snow, ice and open water, and for hunting seals, which make up most of its diet. Although most polar bears are born on land, they spend most of their time on the sea ice. Their scientific name means, maritime bear, and derives from this fact. Polar bears hunt their preferred food of seals from the edge of sea ice, often living off fat reserves when no sea ice is present. Because of their dependence on the sea ice, polar bears are classified as marine mammals. Because of expected habitat loss caused by climate change, the polar bear is classified as a vulnerable species. For decades, large-scale hunting raised international concern for the future of the species, but populations rebounded after controls and quotas began to take effect. For thousands of years, the polar bear has been a key figure in the material, spiritual, and cultural life of circumpolar peoples, and polar bears remain important in their cultures. Historically, the polar bear has also been known as the white bear. It is sometimes referred to as the nanook, based on the Inuit term nanook. Unlike brown bears, polar bears are not territorial. Although stereotyped as being voraciously aggressive, they are normally cautious in confrontations, and often choose to escape rather than fight. Satiated polar bears rarely attack humans unless severely provoked. However, due to their lack of prior human interaction, hungry polar bears are extremely unpredictable, fearless towards people and are known to kill and sometimes eat humans. Many attacks by brown bears are the result of surprising the animal, which is not the case with the polar bear. Polar bears are stealth hunters, and the victim is often unaware of the bear's presence until the attack is underway. Whereas brown bears often maul a person and then leave, polar bear attacks are more likely to be predatory and are almost always fatal. However, due to the very small human population around the Arctic, such attacks are rare. Michio Hoshino a Japanese wildlife photographer, was once pursued briefly by a hungry male polar bear in northern Alaska. According to Hoshino, the bear started running but Hoshino made it to his truck. The bear was able to reach the truck and tore one of the doors off the truck before Hoshino was able to drive off. In general, adult polar bears live solitary lives. Yet, they have often been seen playing together for hours at a time and even sleeping in an embrace, and polar bear zoologist Nikita Ovzhenikov has described adult males as having, well-developed friendships. Cubs are especially playful as well. Among young males in particular, play fighting may be a means of practicing for serious competition during mating seasons later in life. Polar bears are usually quiet but do communicate with various sounds and vocalizations. Females communicate with their young with moans and chuffs, and the distress calls of both cubs and subadults consists of bleats. Cubs may hum while nursing. When nervous, bears produce huffs, chuffs and snorts while hisses, growls and roars are signs of aggression. Chemical communication can also be important. Bears leave behind their scent in their tracks which allow individuals to keep track of one. Another in the vast Arctic wilderness. In 1992, a photographer near Churchill took a now widely circulated set of photographs of a polar bear playing with a Canadian Eskimo dog Canis familiaris, a tenth of its size. The pair wrestled harmlessly together each afternoon for ten days in a row for no apparent reason, although the bear may have been trying to demonstrate its friendliness in the hope of sharing the kennel's food. This kind of social interaction is uncommon. It is far more typical for polar bears to behave aggressively towards dogs. The polar bear is the most carnivorous member of the bear family, and throughout most of its range, its diet primarily consists of ringed Pusa hispida and bearded seals Aragnathus barbatus. The Arctic is home to millions of seals, which become prey when they surface in holes in the ice in order to breathe, or when they haul out on the ice to rest. Polar bears hunt primarily at the interface between ice, water, and air, they only rarely catch seals on land or in open water. The polar bear's most common hunting method is called still hunting. 
the bear uses its excellent sense of smell to locate a seal breathing hole, and crouches nearby in silence for a seal to appear. The bear may lie in wait for several hours. When the seal exhales, the bear smells its breath, reaches into the hole with a forepaw, and drags it out onto the ice. The polar bear kills the seal by biting its head to crush its skull. The polar bear also hunts by stalking seals resting on the ice. Upon spotting a seal, it walks to within 90 meters, 100 yards, and then crouches. If the seal does not notice, the bear creeps to within 9 to 12 meters, 30 to 40 feet, of the seal and then suddenly rushes forth to attack. A third hunting method is to raid the birth lairs that female seals create in the snow. A widespread legend tells that polar bears cover their black noses with their paws when hunting. This behavior, if it happens, is rare, although the story exists in the oral history of northern peoples and in accounts by early Arctic explorers, there is no record of an eyewitness account of the behavior in recent decades. Mature bears tend to eat only the calorie-rich skin and blubber of the seal, which are highly digestible, whereas younger bears consume the protein-rich red meat. Studies have also photographed polar bears scaling near vertical cliffs, to eat birds' chicks and eggs. For subadult bears, which are independent of their mother but have not yet gained enough experience and body size to successfully hunt seals, scavenging the carcasses from other bears kills as an important source of nutrition. Subadults may also be forced to accept a half-eaten carcass if they kill a seal but cannot defend it from larger polar bears. After feeding, polar bears wash themselves with water or snow. Although polar bears are extraordinarily powerful, its primary prey species, the ring seal, is much smaller than itself, and many of the seals hunted are pups rather than adults. Ring seals are born weighing 5.4 kilograms, 12 pounds, and grown to an estimated average weight of only 60 kilograms, 130 pounds. They also in places prey heavily upon the harp seal, Pagophilus groenlandicus, the harbor seal, Foca vetulina, or the hooded seal, Cystophora crustata. The bearded seal, on the other hand, can be nearly the same size as the bear itself, averaging 270 kilograms, 600 pounds. Adult male bearded seals, at 350 to 500 kilograms, 770 to 1,100 pounds, are too large for a female bear to overtake, and so are potential prey only for mature male bears. Large males also occasionally attempt to hunt and kill even larger prey items. It can kill an adult walrus, Odobinus rosmaris, although this is rarely attempted. At up to 2,000 kilograms, 4,400 pounds, and a typical adult mass range of 600. To 1,500 kilograms, 1,300 to 3,300 pounds, a walrus can be more than twice the bear's weight, has extremely thick skin and has up to 1 meter, 3 feet, long ivory tusks that can be used as formidable weapons. A polar bear may charge a group of walruses, with the goal of separating a young, infirm, or injured walrus from the pod. They will even attack adult walruses when their diving holes have frozen over or intercept them before they can get back to the diving hole in the ice. Yet, polar bears will very seldom attack full-grown adult walruses, with the largest male walrus probably invulnerable unless otherwise injured or incapacitated. Since an attack on a walrus tends to be an extremely protracted and exhausting venture, bears have been known to back down from the attack after making the initial injury to the walrus. Polar bears have also been seen to prey on beluga whales Delphinapterus lucas, and narwhals Monodon monoceros, by swiping at them at breathing holes. The whales are of similar size to the walrus and nearly as difficult for the bear to subdue. Most terrestrial animals in the Arctic can outrun the polar bear on land as polar bears overheat quickly, and most marine animals the bear encounters can outswim it. In some areas, the polar bear's diet is supplemented by walrus calves and by the carcasses of dead adult walruses or whales, whose blubber is readily devoured even when rotten. Polar bears sometimes swim underwater to catch fish like the Arctic char or the forehorn sculpin. For the indigenous peoples of the Arctic, polar bears have long played an important cultural and material role. Polar bear remains have been found at hunting sites dating to 2,500 to 3,000 years ago and 1,500-year-old cave paintings of polar bears have been found in the Chukchi Peninsula. Indeed, it has been suggested that Arctic people's skills in seal hunting and igloo construction has been in part acquired from the polar bears themselves. The Inuit and Alaska natives have many folk tales featuring the bears including legends in which bears are humans when inside their own houses and put on bear hides when going outside, 
and stories of how the constellation that is said to resemble a great bear surrounded by dogs came into being. These legends reveal a deep respect for the polar bear, which is portrayed as both spiritually powerful and closely akin to humans. The human-like posture of bears when standing and sitting, and the resemblance of a skinned bear carcass to the human body, have probably contributed to the belief that the spirits of humans and bears were interchangeable. Among the Chukchi and Yupik of eastern Siberia, there was a long-standing shamanistic ritual of thanksgiving to the hunted polar bear. After killing the animal, its head and skin were removed and cleaned and brought into the home, and a feast was held in the hunting camp in its honor. To appease the spirit of the bear, traditional song and drum music was played, and the skull was ceremonially fed and offered a pipe. Only once the spirit was appeased was the skull be separated from the skin, taken beyond the bounds of the homestead, and placed in the ground, facing north. The Nenets of north-central Siberia placed particular value on the talismanic power of the prominent canine teeth. These were traded in the villages of the lower Yenisei and Katanga rivers to the forest-dwelling peoples further south, who would sew them into their hats as protection against brown bears. It was believed that the little nephew, the brown bear, would not dare to attack a man wearing the tooth of its powerful, big uncle, the polar bear. The skulls of killed polar bears were buried at sacred sites, and altars, called Sedyongi, were constructed out of the skulls. Several such sites have been preserved on the Yamal Peninsula.